The Finley Holiday slide cassette program that you are about to see and hear is the first of its kind ever made available to the public. And it is a new high in audio-visual entertainment for people of all ages. It's very simple to use. Please follow these instructions. First, place your 40 slides in the projector and move to slide one. Then, each time that you hear the tone, advance the slide. It's as simple as that. So now, sit back and let's enjoy the show. Ten, nine, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. As mighty engines blast with fearsome intensity, the shock wave of sound echoes across the wide expanse of the Cape Kennedy launch range. And then Apollo 11, carrying her fragile load of humanity, rises with slow majesty off the pad to leap into the heavens. In the steel and concrete blockhouse of launch complex control, this is a tense moment for the men controlling the launch. They can feel the vibration of blastoff, but concentrate on their instrument panels, watching for any little sign that might signal disaster. This is a record book flight, however, with everything go all the way, as Apollo 11 rockets high into the upper reaches of Earth's atmosphere. The long tail of fire pushing the Saturn V toward the moon is burning 15 tons of fuel per second. An artist's conception shows what an observer would see deep in space along the path of Apollo 11's flight. Command module pilot Mike Collins has docked with the lunar module and is pulling away from the burnt out Saturn third stage. A backward glance gave the three astronauts this view of Earth as they sped toward the moon. Part of West Africa can be seen. Three days later, during insertion into lunar orbit, the Apollo 11 spacecraft was close enough to get this close-up of the moon's craters. Shortly after entering the lunar module, Armstrong and Aldrin got this shot of the prime landing site in the center near the Terminator. At the upper left center is Hypatia Rills, renamed US-1 by the astronauts. Sidewinder Rill and Diamondback Rill extend across the center of the southwestern Sea of Tranquility. Back on Earth, millions waited anxiously during the final descent of the lunar module for that historic moment of landing. And then... Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. All over the world, people clapped and cheered as the voice of Neil Armstrong announced the landing. What an awesome sight it must have been for Armstrong and Aldrin to look out upon this desolate scene. They were the first men to view the rough, crater-pocked lunar surface from only a few feet away. Only a few inches of metal separated them from the barren, airless, freezing wasteland of the moon. Looking through another viewport gives the impression of a bizarre, abstract painting. It is, in reality, the zigzag blackness of shadows cast by the lunar module. Now man was going to set foot upon that dead surface and the honor was to go to Commander Neil A. Armstrong. He left the LEM and stood on one of the landing pads. Then came that magic moment that finally realized the true beginning of man's conquest of space. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Man was on the moon. Perhaps someday this first footprint to be set in the moon's powdery surface will be gently scooped up and brought back to Earth for all mankind to see. A man no less honored was Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, and the second man to set foot on the moon's surface. This is Aldrin as he started down the ladder, paused in his bulky spacesuit on the lowest rung, and then jumped down onto the surface to join his comrade in those first almost playful bounding walks about the area where the LEM landed. One of the astronauts' first duties after getting used to moving about in the weak gravity of the moon was to deploy the Stars and Stripes. 
a wire stiffener was used to keep it unfurled. Armstrong holds the flagstaff, which he had trouble planting in the lunar soil. Aldrin arranges the flag. This photo of Aldrin saluting the flag may seem a little posed, but there is a lot of sentiment in his gesture. They carried more than just a flag across the trackless wastes of space to plant in the moon's rocky soil. They carried a true symbol of peace. This breathtakingly beautiful portrait of the lunar module with Buzz Aldrin standing before it is an example of a superb photography which Armstrong used to such scientific and historic advantage. Now it was time for the astronauts to get busy with the experiments that had been planned as part of the Apollo 11 mission, one of which was to measure the solar wind composition. Here Aldrin erects the metal screen which captured atomic particles from the sun. The light spots are caused by sun rays reflecting in the camera lens. Aldrin carries two of the instrument experiment packages striding along the lip of a fairly large crater. His feet have made deep impressions in the loose soil around the edge of the crater. Notice how easily Aldrin carries the instrument packages. Despite their bulk, they weigh only a few pounds in the weak gravity of the moon. Aldrin is now at his farthest point from the lunar module and is deploying the experiments. The first one he will set up is the seismic component, which measures moonquakes and other land movements on the moon. Near the lunar module and to the left is part of a large crater, showing how close the landing came to disaster. The LEM was low on fuel, and had it come down on the edge of the crater, it might have tipped over, stranding the astronauts. On the lunar horizon between Aldrin and the crater is the television camera that Armstrong set up just after setting foot on the surface. The large rectangular black panels on either side of the seismic detector are the solar cells that power the electronic data gathering and transmitting units. This experiment was left on the moon's surface and has already returned information to Earth on hundreds of lunar moonquakes and landslides. The largest crater within walking distance of the lunar module is approximately 80 feet in diameter. Neil Armstrong took his own picture when he snapped this shot. Aldrin's gold visor reflects a clear image of Armstrong, Aldrin's shadow, and the lunar module. The small points of light in the background are the experiments. If you look closely, perhaps you can see the frayed area on the left elbow of Aldrin's suit. It isn't known what caused the damage. The small crater in which Aldrin had been standing can be seen more clearly here as he turns toward the limb. The shallow crater is estimated to be over 500 million years old. We came in peace for all mankind, reads the commemorative plaque attached to the descent stage of the lunar module which was left on the moon's surface. It bears the signatures of all three astronauts and that of President Richard M. Nixon. Back inside the lunar module after their historic walk on the moon's surface, the astronauts prepared for their departure. Commander Armstrong did have time, however, to take a few more photos of the moon's surface, showing the shadow of the limb on the dusty brown surface. A close-up view of their footprints, crossing and recrossing each other, leaving an indelible mark on the face of the moon to mark man's first passing visit. And the American flag, standing in frozen splendor as a sign that America was the first to send a man to the lunar surface. And at long last, Commander Armstrong had a chance to get his own likeness captured for posterity. This photo was taken by Aldrin just before their departure. A sign of the five days that had already gone by can be seen in the dark stubble of beard on Armstrong's chin. The lunar module, the moon, and the Earth rising over the lunar horizon. The amazing composition seen by command pilot Mike Collins as the astronauts rocketed up from the surface to rejoin him. And here is Collins from the Eagle's point of view during the final approach for docking with the Columbia. The command module is about 60 miles above the moon at this point. Note the almost perfect roundness of the large craters at the upper left. 
The three-day journey back to Earth was mostly a time of rest for the astronauts. But one of them caught this beautiful angle of the Earth's atmosphere from deep space. The spacecraft was in the shadow of the Earth, with a reflection of the sun's rays shining through the upper layers of the atmosphere. Home, almost. Once more in the strong grip of Earth's gravity, the Apollo 11 command module hurtled into the Earth's atmosphere, the blunt end of its heat shield blazing with a tremendous heat of re-entry. Meanwhile, at Mission Control in Houston, the technicians wait to see if the computed re-entry path is being followed. This amazing complex from which the entire Apollo series of flights has been conducted is one of the greatest achievements of American technology. Home, at last. The astronauts are back safe on Earth, gently rocking in the Pacific waves southwest of Hawaii. Breathing fresh air once more, the astronauts emerge from the blackened and charred space capsule. They are wearing the special biological isolation garments that were to protect against any possible contamination brought back from the moon. As it turned out, the suits weren't necessary. Even though they were back and safe, it would be a while before the astronauts could go out to receive the congratulations of a deliriously happy America. From the recovery helicopter, they moved into the mobile quarantine trailer that would be their home until they reached the lunar receiving laboratory for a 21-day quarantine. This was part of the contamination precautions. Aboard the USS Hornet recovery carrier and safely tucked into their quarantine trailer, Congratulations are in order for the three astronauts. First to officially greet them is President Nixon. Here, he and Buzz Aldrin exchange A-OK -okay signs while Mike Collins looks on. Inside the trailer, Ed Aldrin takes an inventory of the trailer facilities. Neil Armstrong is just behind him talking on the telephone. The Hornet was speeding toward Hawaii, where the astronauts and their trailer would be put aboard an aircraft and flown to Houston. This simple appearing rock is a piece of the heavens, one of the moon rocks collected and brought back to Earth. Carried in carefully sealed vacuum containers, it and others have been undergoing intense investigation by scientists all over the world. And this is the beginning. Three immortal names that will echo down the long halls of history. Commander Neil A. Armstrong. Lunar Module Pilot Edwin E. Aldrin. And Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. Three men who dared to brave the unknowns of space and the lunar surface so that man might go on to the stars. Your bi-media program is now complete. Please rewind this tape and you will be ready to enjoy it again at your next showing.